When we first covered sorts, we looked at some small examples of how they work to help describe the, the basic process of the algorithm. And while looking at little samples of, say, eight numbers, which is what we were, were working with, can be uh, useful, it actually is nice if you can visualize larger sets of sorts. And for that, we can write some code. Uh, you can actually find visualizations, but I think it's instructive for us to write our own visualization. This is actually one of the advantages of the fact that we've done graphics before we actually do our sorts. So I have brought over kind of a template from the graphics chapter where I've imported a number of different things as well as the three sorts that we wrote previously, our bubble sort, our min sort, and our insertion sort. And then we have our main down here at the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to put inside of our scene, I want to put a canvas and so now canvas and some buttons that I can click on to make the different sorts happen. So canvas is a new canvas and we give it a size. Now my scene right now is 300 by 600. I could repeat that here. I'm already getting this feeling of what are referred to as magic numbers. I'd rather not have that. Turns out that the width of this, every pixel in the width is going to be one value in our array. And that the height is just something we're going to use so that I don't have magic numbers. I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm going to define this to be the number of numbers, num numbers, is 300. And the draw height will be defined as, say, 600 pixels. So I'll come down here and I'll replace the 300s with that. And replace the 600s with draw height, like such. That way I don't have magic numbers in here. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get our graphics context. And one of the things that I'm going to add into my content, and it's singular, is the canvas. In addition, I want three buttons. So I'm going to call them the bubble button, which is a new button, which will say, we'll just call it, say bubble on it. We'll make two others. One that's called the men button, because we're going to do a men sort. And the other is the insert button. We'll have that say selection and insertion. I also want to put those inside of my contents. I'd kind of like them lined up across the top. A good way to do that would be with a new H box. I can tell it how many pixels I want between these, maybe five pixels between them. And then we want bubble button, min button, and insert button. And I believe I need whoop, a close parentheses to finish that off. Let's make sure I've typed that in correctly. So this should pop up a window. It's 300 by 600, and it has the buttons in there. They don't do anything yet. Okay, but I have a canvas. I have stuff. Now what I need to do is I need to have a function <clears throat> that will draw to the graphics context the values in the arrays that we're sorting. So let's make a function render, uh, how about render values? And I'm going to pass in the array, which is an array of doubles because that's what our sorts here are set up for sorting. I need to pass in the, probably a value, I'll call it J, which will be basically the J in all of these sorts. It's the inner loop. And I want to draw an indicator there. And then I also want to pass in the graphics context. Because we need to be able to draw to that. And this function is just going to draw stuff. It's not going to give us anything back. 
first thing we need to do is clear everything out. So we're going to clear a rectangle. C L E A R. Clear rect starting at 0, 0 and going to num numbers, comma, draw height. After I have that, I am going to set the stroke color to be black. And I'm going to run through the array. And I need to know the indices. So I'm going to have a for loop. I am going to be have I go 0, or actually for a dot indices. And I want to basically draw a line for every one of the numbers that's in the array a. We draw a line by calling stroke line. The x value that we're going to use is i for both the beginning and the end value. And the y value, well, one end of the line is supposed to go all the way to the bottom, which will be draw height. And the other end of the line it should be at a height determined by a. So if a is 0, it should be down at draw height. And if a is 1, it should be up at 0. So smaller values will have shorter lines. And we can make that by doing a minus, or sorry, 1 minus a sub i. And then taking that and multiplying it by draw height. So if the value here is 0, I get 1 minus 0, which is 1, draw height, and basically we don't draw any line at all. <clears throat> if the value were 1, then 1 minus 1 would be 0, and it would touch the top. The other thing I want to do is I want to draw a line kind of at the top that shows us the value of j. We need to draw this in a different color. So we'll set the stroke to color.red, and then gc dot stroke line. We'll use j as our x value. It starts at the top. And maybe just go down 100 pixels. And we're not going to worry too much about that. Actually, maybe, eh, I think I like 100. That way it will be long enough we can see it below the buttons. So now that we have this render function, we need to add it into our sorts and make it so that the buttons cause those sorts to happen. We'll come back and we'll add that code in the next video.